automation internet of things and machine learning are but equally important is to have dinner with your family these posts have been made uh, through civil service examination that means now one a very warm welcome to hightest channel today we have a special guest joining with us from canada she is my classmate from engineering hello anjali a very warm welcome to the channel hey shanti thanks for having me here andar ki namaskaram hope you are doing all good anjali is from nepal and she has studied in delhi for a couple of years in classes 11 and 12 and then she joined andhra university to pursue electrical and electronic engineering she joined andhra university through the foreign category and believe it or not in the four years that she spent there she completely learned telugu like she can speak <laughs> you can speak completely right thank you kuchum kuchum okay great <laughs> and hindi you you completely fluent yeah hindi is pretty good for me okay so that's four languages for anjali <laughs> great so the very first question that i have for you is why engineering in the first place um that's a great question um if i look back as a kid i have been the hard working nerdy variety and for us in asian family when you get a little bit of good score the fate is kind of sealed for you so science as a course was chosen for me um i didn't get to choose science uh, but when i finished high school it was decision time uh, just like for everybody my parents always imagined me in a white uh, lab coat but when it came the time to decide rather than focusing on the designation like doctor or engineer i focused on the life the next 40 years the next 50 years am i able to stay in that career and do that thing day in and day out so when you think in that way the decision was uh, much clearer for me i wanted to be an engineer i wanted to be a part of creating something new designing new product so engineer came to me as an easy easy flow that's great to know on a lighter note i remember the first day you came to andhra university it was uh, you came in jeans and we were all in chudidars and you were like the odd one out how did you sure. what was your experience um it was true i was the odd one out the moment i stepped into the compound i got a little bit of stink eye here and there but i remember you saved a spot for me you know it was really <laughs> nice i appreciated that and when i joined andhra university i had a pride or a little bit of vanity thinking that i was a smart one right but then i talked to you and you had spent only 3 months on cbsc and spent the rest of the time in nsep yet you scored much better than me in cbsc so there was a little bit of ah i am not the only smart one there are like better challengers i need to compete with you know the game is up so I, I remember that. That was a very clear memory for me. <laughs> well, I I do remember one more incident. In fact, I remember how burnt out we all were. Like you just said that we scored better than you. But on the other side, on a much darker note, we were slogging <laughs> for twelve hours a day for the competitive examinations, and uh, we were burnt out. And yeah. we would not do normal functions properly. but uh, you would do that much better than us so i guess it's a balance that we yeah, have yeah it's definitely a check and balance right <laughs> so i have a very important question for you anjali this is based on a recent incident that has happened which has been a, a very demotivating factor for engineers some of the major major vacancies the railways used to recruit a lot of people from engineering uh, section but now these posts have been made a uh, through civil service examination that means now anybody can enter not just the engineers and this has really demotivated a lot of engineers it's not just about losing the railway posts but also about the fact that 
the engineering posts are getting diluted so what do you think is the future for engineering is engineering still a option where you have a lot of career options lucrative options what is your take on it it's unfortunate to hear that engineers are not getting the due advantage uh, which they need uh, we engineers spend 4 years to prepare ourselves for the profession and railway i think is an engineering niche where engineers should be given the consideration they deserve um with that being said we know engineering is a very vast field it goes from civil mechanical electrical everywhere but i can give you insight on the current trends for software and electronics engineering what i see that is automation internet of things and machine learning are the three biggest power words that we see in our industry with automation uh, you can see that in the next 10 years a lot of blue collar job would be replaced by automatic equipments so we need engineers uh, to design those hardwares we need software engineers to bring life into those uh, machines and also maintenance and test engineers to make sure that those uh, hardwares are working as as required the other trend i see is internet of things they advertise that your fridge your table your restaurant everything is going to be connected to the internet but it's not as easy you need certain set of equipments for uh, for the hardware to be internet friendly for that you need a number of radio frequency engineers so for 12th graduates electronics and communication is the way to go if you want to be a part of internet of things the last but not the least is machine learning um a lot of big companies are collecting data on us in a huge amount whether it's ethical or not is a discussion for other day but those data needs to be analyzed those data need to be visualized and we need to make certain information out of it right and also companies are putting it into the machine learning sector like uh, predicting stocks or uh, looking at the pattern of uh, customer purchases but for all that we need uh, uh, a scientist or engineers to look at the data and give some insights into it so these three are the biggest trend that i see for engineers so the future is really bright for the engineers for next 50 years at least until then we would have made the machines smart enough to be the dominating species of the planet and our fate is sealed <laughs> i hope it's a joke <laughs> hopefully hopefully it's a joke but it's really it's it's in fact a good news that engineers do have a bright future uh They going do. back to the personal uh, aspect of uh, the engineer's life you are a new mom how do you get to manage as a woman as a mom how do you get to manage your professional and your personal goals that's a tough one it's a really tough situation well because when you are growing up uh, in in my family at least all i was taught to be a studious student to work hard to study to get good grades in exam and all the other things will fall into place but that's not the truth uh, life is all about balance um yes getting a good career and having a good um job is important but equally important is to have dinner with your family uh, equally important it is to travel to go into new places learn about new culture and geography it kind of makes you humble so at times it gets confusing at times it gets depressing it's highs and lows but your family and your job always go hand in hand because there will be some days you fail in your job and you come back to your support system your family so it it's important to maintain that it's important to have a lifeline addition to your job thank you thank you for sharing that i guess a lot of us do forget that uh, humane part of ourselves we are so engulfed with the success and achievements and everything and it it really it takes a lot of energy to be able to realize that we are human as well so thanks for, for sure. sharing that 
and uh, what about your final message if there's one message that you wish to give to all of the viewers what would that be um yes i thought about the message a lot um as i am growing in my uh, professional and personal life i have found a few things that are important uh, to learn yes uh, as i mentioned education is very important education will get you to places but in addition to that there are many other things like money management uh, managing your finances resilience to kind of fail in your life and then bounce back uh, ability to be confident in your skin in your body in your skin color uh, ability to maintain eye contact all those skills are very important and they need certain amount of time certain amount of hard work to achieve it it's just not going to come with the click of the fingers so yes you need to spend time on your education but you also need to spend time on other aspects which is equally important for your career success that's a really sweet message anjali and i do do agree with the fact that life is not just about education but about developing overall life skills and with that that is the end of the video and thank you anjali for hanging out with us thanks shanti i had a great fun working with you thank you and thank you for all of the viewers who watched till now and do look out for more content in the future and do check out the content that has already been posted thank you